I'd like to begin today, obviously, um, with the ongoing uh, carnage in Gaza. And I, I want to begin with with something that happened uh, a couple days ago that I think um, it reflects something that like we we spoke about the last time we were on the show, which like deals with sort of the how should I put this the uh, the grade inflation going on in the Israeli military and their complete lack of discipline. I'm referring, of course, to what is being touted as the deadliest day in this war so far. If you only count Israelis. Uh, this was an incident that, that as was, we uh, should, you should only yeah. count Israeli deaths because, frankly, you know that's the only ones that matter. Yeah, the deadliest day of this war since October seventh uh, w- was caused by an incident in which something like twenty or twenty-one Israeli colonels, generals, and majors, ages nineteen <laughs> to twenty. Yeah, that was a fascinating. Yeah. Were, so basically, so like, how, 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 yeah, yeah. Felix, you describe what happened here. The best I can describe this is they were hanging out in a house made entirely out of dynamite. (laughs) (laughs) And like Will alluded to this, but okay. In one tweet from like a Hezbarist, I saw him refer to a 26 year old uh, major general, which I want that to be true, but I figure that might be a misprint. But then I saw more, I saw a more official thing like something from like an actual newspaper alluding to a 32 year old major general. So I don't like (laughs) these both could be errors, but like maybe not knowing what we know. I mean, there, we, (laughs) there was a 21 year old captain. I think there could easily be a 32 year old major general, right? I 32 is within the realm of possibility. I think the, the post, I mean, I saw the same post and it had like, four major generals and like three colonels and uh you know a major there was like one nco in in the entire 21 people uh who were killed in this incident and i thought well that's a little bit bit, bit of a high ranking delegation to send to blow up a house well, yeah uh, Derek, and i, I do point. think that they were i do think that the, it was mistaken but the real ranks the actual ranks from what i understand are are almost as absurd i mean it's a bunch of like 20 year old captains and majors like like how do you how does that happen it's 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 ridiculous yeah like a a a major a major is like a very serious administrative position not even to mention like what you would presumably have to do if you were a major deployed in battle you know you are in charge of so many people and so many things and I think about like any twenty-two-year-old doing that job, and it's just like horrifying. It's okay. horrifying. Well, Felix, I mean that's a good point. Like in in most militaries, if you reach the rank of major, you're like responsible for probably thousands of people. You make huge decisions, and it's mostly like an administrative role. In the Israeli military, the major generals are, as you said, Felix, basically personally setting up mines in a house filled with dynamite. I mean, like, basically what happened is that they were, according to the, uh, according to, like, Israeli military sources, they were engaged in an operation to basically raise residential neighborhoods within a X amount of miles of the security fence, or the so-called security fence, I should say. Um, and basically it was, like, a, a Looney Tunes-style uh, uh, military operation, because, like, it's like, it's like when Bugs Bunny creates a sexy lady out of only dynamite, and then, like, Kathy smooches her. And it blows up in his face. <laughs> they were in a house filled with mines, 20 of them. And the resistance forces um, basically shot a grenade in there and blew up the entire building and killed all of them. Yeah, it's I mean, it's not even clear that the the militants would have known that they were. I mean, I, they fired an RPG at them because it was an inviting target. But I don't think they could have known that they had wired the house up to, to but, blow up and that they were going to set off this chain reaction of explosives for yeah like and and we we've seen a lot of examples over the last couple of weeks of these controlled demolitions of like major parts of the civilian infrastructure in Gaza we saw them detonate a university just like you know n- not bombing it from the air under some sort of conceivable idea that there's a military operation going on this is just like everything's been cleared out of it and they plant charges throughout the entire building and just reduce it to rubble okay here's my question i i've seen on TikTok just two weeks ago, them doing TikTok dances with these minds. Here's my question to Derek and Felix. 
What is the likelihood that these 20 generals were recording a TikTok video when that building got blown up? Extremely high. <laughs> like, it, it, extremely <laughs> high. I mean, I would, I would, we've seen like the kinds of TikToks they do. And it is like, like sub silent film level comedy. Like it's a sort of shit where they'll like, they'll take a, a, a part of a door from a house they blew up. And be like, this is knock knock joke. Who's behind it? <laughs> no more house. <laughs> and Did you it, see the one? Just like sub verbal. Like it's caveman. astonishing. It's astonishing the stuff that they they film themselves in. Like you have people like going through like women's bedrooms and like yeah, sniffing I, their underwear. I was and, like, just going to bring that, that one up on TikTok. Yeah. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Well, what, I mean, like, the- why would you want anybody to know that you're doing this? I mean, like, it's it's astonishing. Like, I mean, talk about like, I, I just I didn't know that militaries in ongoing like war operations let their like enlisted men and officers just post on social media constantly, especially when the videos being posted by occupation soldiers in this operation are like the best evidence possible that what they're doing constitutes a war crime. Derek, you brought up the video the one I saw like weeks ago, but it was a British guy born in London who had come back to fight um, uh, in, 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 like invade Gaza, essentially. And he's like, they're just stealing from people's houses. And he's going through an underwear drawer and picking out like lingerie and going, oh, I don't know about this. Oh, something's going on with this. I'm not, I'm not having none of that, love. And it's just sort of like they're like underwear in people's houses. How can you believe this? Yes. Yeah, and, like, and then there's just stuff oh of them God. just stealing from just or like, you know, uh, laughing about blowing up schools and stuff. Just literally looting. Ste- I mean, houses. looting, literally looting shops. I mean, like breaking, cla- breaking glass cases and taking stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I guess like I just I, I, is there any precedent for an army that's engaged in like an armed conflict to like have this kind of social media policy? I mean, I know American troops are like posting when from Iraq and Afghanistan, but that was usually when they were like back at the base and they were like, I don't know, like talking about, I don't know, like what they're doing in their off time or something like that. It, it is incredible that they're doing this and that, that nobody's reined them in. I mean, if, if not for the, the image of it and the fact that you really don't want to broadcast the callousness of this operation and just the extent of the, the depravity to the world, if, if not for that, then because it's really fucking stupid to do this shit in a war zone when you can be you can be fired on at any minute. Um, much like it's really stupid to wire buildings to blow up if you don't clearly don't have the areas secured. Like I don't know what they're doing. I just don't know the the thinking behind it. Yes, yeah, I I will say there is a precedent actually for uh you know at least one side I know of in an armed conflict that posted this much and posted. So much evidence of, you know, their own violations of international law and uh, established law and war crimes. It would be ISIS. Yeah. Like that is literally the only group. And they also ISIS also did do the very stupid thing of, you know, broadcasting their position and uh, just sort of haphazardly posting their way through a war, presumably for no other reason uh, then I guess the reason anyone else posts so people would think it's cool. It's cool. I mean, they would put together I, videos. Yeah. Yeah. If I was in, if I was in a war zone though, I think probably like a very likely way I would die is getting domed by a sniper while I was trying to look at pictures of myself as either black or Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, I mean, it, it does speak to the, like, just level i i don't know maybe there's just like a, a level of impunity like you see these uh, hasbaras accounts on twitter who post these compilation videos of like israeli and i guess they're trying to to counter the the videos that hamas has posted of like attacks on israeli positions but these are just like hey look we blew up a building look we blew up a school look we blew up here's a guy shooting at a door or like at an open window with nobody there and it's just like what you know what is the the point here except to uh in some in many of these cases to just announce to the world that like hey we're like we're doing war crimes i mean we are doing war crimes the the blowing up these houses they admitted essentially to doing war crimes in the past when they've wired these buildings up they they try to justify it by saying oh you know there was like a tunnel underneath which they can say for uh anything or you know this was a a hamas secret hamas headquarters or whatever 
But in this case, they were open about the fact that like, hey, yeah, we're blowing these buildings up because we want to create a buffer zone, which is a violation of international law. It violates one of the Biden administration's alleged red lines about this operation, which was no reduction in the territory of Gaza after the war, a la the creation of a, a buffer zone. Um, it's it's just crazy to me that they're they're doing this so openly. And then, of course, you have a lot of these just these videos and the, the buildings that they've been destroying are, as you said, will things like uh, universities, uh, halls of government, places where records are kept. It's it's just an obvious. Also, some of the oldest kind of mosques and churches on the planet. Out. Yeah, old, uh, absolutely. Yeah, just to snuff out the culture and the history of the place uh, along with the people. Another thing that ISIS would do. Recording yeah. themselves, destroying, yeah, you know, timeless the cemeteries, the artifacts. Of cemeteries. Yeah, yeah. The I, looting I of do, artifacts. Yeah. I, I, I do think that Derek's right that a lot of these videos, not necessarily like the the t- the dances and stuff, but more like um, you know, the stuff you see where they're blowing up like houses that have already been blown up, or like those hysterical videos where they're pre-firing at empty rooms. Uh, yeah. I think that's absolutely a hasty response to the Kassam Brigade's videos. Like, I got to say, I would have never get like a year ago, I would have never guessed that those would become like a sensation that everyone loved the, the videos from the Kassam Brigades with the red triangle. But they're huge. They're huge because like the stuff that those guys do in those videos is like insane we've talked about it a million times but it's like objectively like very brave and singular acts but on the israeli side it's like an it is a case of like believing your own propaganda too much they don't believe that like palestinians are capable of like improvising tactics in a smart way or bravery or anything so they think that people like these kassam videos just because like i don't know they're blowing stuff up and, yeah. and Palestinians are savages, so they're like, "All right, we'll we'll just release videos where we're where, where, where we're doing bad stuff while we're doing explosions." To your to your point, it's like the contrast in those videos because, like, leaving uh, moral and political considerations aside about like you know whether you like what they're doing or think it's justified, the Kassam Brigade videos genuinely portray like acts of courage in the context of an armed conflict between two you know armed opponents trying to kill each other, right? Compare that to like uh, Derek and Felix. Have you seen, I think, like the single most insane video to come out of the IDF in, in this slaughter? Did you see the video of the guy dressed in what was, what can I, in a velociraptor costume, the kind that you usually see at like NBA games or like tailgate parties. Oh, he was God. dressed as a velociraptor frantically loading shells into like a mortar. Shell. Yeah, I did see yeah. that. I, I just, I, I mean, mortar, I, I, that was one that I, I like, I saw it as I was scrolling through and I was like, you know what? I just, I don't want to know what's going on there. I'm going to move on with my life. Like, why should I waste my beautiful mind on this? That was really, really bad. That was like, talk about like elder millennial cringe. And the, <laughs> yeah. the fact that the fact that we know that the soldier who dressed up like a dinosaur is an elder millennial, that he was probably born in like 83 or 84 that's probably the field marshal of Israel. <laughs> <laughs> like going he's what we know. He's running the whole opera. He's the yeah. Dwight Eisenhower of, yeah. this, of, 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 of this of this military operation. Yeah. It, and yeah. Like, if he's if he's over 40, he's a rank that like only exists in the Halo games. <laughs> like, <laughs> Arbiter. Like he's, he's like the space marshal of Israel. Well, I mean, like I think the point I want to like underscore about the like the the like the occupation the occupation army and then they're like what they're advertising to the world is just like even if the videos even if you want to quibble about like oh they're not actually just showing them executing civilians or whatever but what it does what it does advertise to the world is their absolutely sadistic glee in fighting this war like this is not a portrayal of a, a people who have been forced into a conflict and that they now must undertake with like a grim solemn uh, like, you know, duty to protect themselves and like uh, knowing full well the cost of war, et cetera, et cetera. No, these are dumb ass like college age kids who are having a blast d- gleefully displaying their sadism to the entire world. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, I guess like where I want to go from there is like give, given the, the the incident of 20 Israeli generals home aloneing themselves in a controlled demolition. 
But like, 